Yo, what's going on, people? Check it out. We're back at it again. For those of you who don't know, Derek Bennett here from Base Nation Academy. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the minor seven flat five chord. <laughs> So the minor seven flat five chord really isn't talked about really as much as a major chord or a minor chord. So it's one of those chords that's just, you know, kind of out there. It's really called a half diminished chord. If you want to think about it like that, it's the last mode of the major modes. And if you were to go up the modes and play to the seventh mode, that's your Locrian mode. It will start on the F sharp. And that's where that chord derives from. And there's several ways to play that. I happen to be in the key of G major, but you can play it in the key of C major if you're more comfortable with that. Your seventh mode in the key of C major will start on B. And it'll be the same exact chord. The same exact thing. So let's just stay in the key of G for now. That seventh mode will start on the F sharp. So there's several ways to play it. Like I said, you can play that. It's kind of, you know, kind of weird trying to conform your fingers this way. So you have your first finger here on the F sharp. I use my fourth finger, my pinky here on the C, next string down. And then for the E, I use my second finger on the D string. And then for the A, I'll use my third finger on the G string. And that creates that chord. You don't have to play all of those notes or that note on the top. You can just leave it plainly at F sharp, C, and that's your half diminished chord or your minor seven flat five. The reason why you call it a minor seven flat five because in the scale we have F sharp, minor seven. So we have a minor seven, minor seven here. And then a flat five would be here, that C. Because normally a natural five would be a C sharp, but flat five would be a C. So you have an F sharp, a C, and an E for your minor seven. So it spells out the chord for you minor seven, flat five, including the root. Okay, so there's several ways to play this. Like I said, you can play it here on the A string, starting here on your bass note F sharp. You have first finger here on the ninth fret, uh, A string, third finger here on the 10th fret, D string, ninth fret again, your second finger here. It's almost the same as if you're playing it up here with that note on the top, but you can play it that way. There's also one more root position to play this in and it starts almost the first way that we played it. We're just kind of moving some notes around just a little bit. So we have the root note, the F sharp of this chord, the C, but we're not gonna play the C there. We're gonna move that up an octave. And then we're gonna play our other note, the E on the D string on the 14th fret. So we have F sharp, E, C, which includes our flat five. That C, that note C is our flat five. So we have one flat five and seven included in this chord. It's just the three that's missing, okay? And that's perfectly fine for playing this on the bass. Uh, if you were playing this on a piano or on another instrument, you usually want to include that third note or that minor third as well. But for this, in our instance, we can't really add that uh, to be able to get a completely different sound or feel of this chord. And this is the way I like to play it too. I have my two higher notes here and my lower note at the bottom. It just spaces the chord out a little bit better to be able to be played on the bass guitar. Now, this chord, you'll find, what I like to do with this chord, I like to substitute the five chord for this chord. So if you're playing a song, say in key of G major, you will usually go to your five chord. Oh, let me start up here. Your five chord, your dominant seven chord. What I like to do is substitute that five chord for that diminished chord. Okay, so if you have a progression, uh, so instead of the dominant seven chord, the D seven, I play the F sharp diminished or half diminished or F sharp minor seven flat five. Here it is. And it resolves nicely as a substitution to the five chord. Also, you hear this in gospel music a lot for uh, different turnarounds and things like that. I'm thinking of a song now uh, by Hezekiah Walker. Um, I'll, I'll put the link up here. And it goes something like this. I'm not sure if this is the right key, but it does B minor seven flat five right here to a turnaround to the E. In this 
case, I use that minor seven flat five chord on the third note of the scale. So it's almost like turning around from the three to the six to the two to the five, right? So if you're in the key of G major, do, 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 do. So I'm turning it around using some substitute chords or some borrowed chords and also uh, uh, some secondary dominant chords as well. But you get the picture, you get the idea. This movement happens so much inside of gospel music, especially, um, you know, old school gospel music that does that type of turnaround. Uh, so you'll hear this a lot. It might not be common in other genres of music, but in gospel, it's definitely there. You also want to know what that chord is so you can play uh, any line or anything like that. Like I played. <laughs> So if you want to kind of get a little creative like that, you can do that and go, you know, branch out just a little bit. So that is the minor seven flat five chord. That's really not talked about a lot as much. If you want to know more or to learn more about all of these chords, there's so many chords tutorials and chords courses inside of Bass Nation Academy. Uh, I'll put the link in the description so you guys can check it out for yourself. If you're looking to enhance your bass plan, go check that out, please. If you haven't subscribed, please hit that red subscribe button. It's red down below somewhere on the page. Uh, hit that red subscribe button, hit the notification bell icon, hit that so you can get notified every single time we upload a video to our channel. Thanks for being here. You guys are awesome. Uh, look forward to chopping it up with you in the comments. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, go ahead and Get loose in the comments and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Oh, wait, make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise. And I'll check you guys in the next one. Peace.